All right, we are reading the article Alone in the Universe and following along. Here we go. Tell yourself as much as you want to that you don't believe in aliens, UFOs, or extraterrestrials. But until you've spent one night camping out in the desert near the airfield outside of Roswell, New Mexico, sleeping under an open sky so immense and glittering that the ground beneath you seems like little more than a speck of dust drifting through an auditorium, I won't believe you. I certainly wasn't a believer. I was in fifth grade and our teachers took our whole class camping where he got the idea of Roswell. I'll never know. I knew this and that about Roswell, and considering what I knew, I wouldn't have opted to camp there if it was up to me. My classmate Dylan, of course, disagreed. The government doesn't want us to know, he whispered, because the aliens want to give us special powers. And if we got special powers, well then, the government wouldn't be able to control our brains. We were in the back seat of the bus, heading south. That's a bunch of bunk, said Dylan from the seat across the aisle. Yes, there were two boys in my class with the name that sounded the same, Dylan and Dylan. They were also both the best at playing sports and the two biggest boys in our class, and they both considered me, small as I was, a best friend. Strange as it was, that's just how it was with Dylan and Dylan and me. Dylan said, I bet you're just scared. Dylan said, I bet you're just gullible. There aren't any such things as aliens. I remembered a TV show Dylan had once told me about. It was about a little girl who had woken up one night to find a ray of light brighter than the sun streaming through her window. She tried to scream, but she couldn't move her lips. Her entire body was paralyzed. The ray of light lifted her right up out of her bed, floated her through her window, and carried her into a flying saucer circling soundlessly outside her house. I didn't sleep for at least a week after Dylan told me that. Jessie, said Dylan. Jesse, said Dylan. Hello, Earth to Jesse. Huh, I said. Well, what do you think, said both Dylan and Dylan at once. Aliens, I said. No way. I'm too old to believe in that kind of stuff. We hiked the whole afternoon and cooked a big chili stew over a bonfire for dinner. After dinner, Dylan, Dylan, and I climbed up on top of a ridge to watch the sunset, while the rest of our class remained down below, digesting dinner. Along with the fading sunlight faded my good humor. Night arrived, and with it my mounting terror of whatever might materialize in the expansive and star-speckled emptiness above us. How can you look out at all of that, asked Dylan, and honestly believe that there's nothing out there that could still surprise us? Not aliens again, said Dylan. I swallowed and said, are either of you scared by that idea at all? Scared, said both Dylan and Dylan at once. Why would we be? But neither Dylan nor Dylan finished that sentence. Something was approaching from over the mountains, though at first it was just a tiny speck of flashing light, no bigger than the stars around it. In a matter of seconds, it was nearly right above us, a round disk with orange and green lights rotating around it. I looked at Dylan, and Dylan looked at Dylan, and Dylan looked at me, and I'd never, in the seven years I'd known both of them, seen either of them looking so scared. In that moment, I knew that we weren't alone in the universe. When the UFO got closer, we all realized it was just a regular old airplane about to land in the nearby airfield. Well, even then, I knew we weren't alone, and neither Dylan, Dylan, nor I, I can guarantee it, slept more than a moment during that long and memorable night. Question one. Who claims that he certainly wasn't a believer at the beginning of the story? A, a pilot flying to an airfield near Roswell, New Mexico. B, Jesse the narrator. C, Dylan, one of Jesse's friends. D, Jesse's fifth grade teacher. Number two, what are the two main settings in this story? A, Jesse's house and an airfield near Roswell, New Mexico. B, a school bus and an airfield near Roswell, New Mexico. C, a school bus and the desert near Roswell, New Mexico. D, the desert near Roswell, New Mexico and Jesse's house. Number three, while on the bus to the campsite, Jesse recalls that he didn't sleep for a week after hearing about a TV show in which aliens kidnap a little girl, but he tells his friends that he's too old to believe in aliens. What conclusion can you draw from this information? A. Jesse doesn't believe in aliens at all. 
B. Jesse doesn't think he should believe in aliens. C. Jesse definitely believes aliens exist. D. Jesse thinks everyone should believe in aliens. Number four. Before Jesse and his friends see anything unusual while camping, how does Jesse feel about the idea of aliens? A. Disbelieving and bored. B. Confident and interested. C. Uncertain and scared. D. Curious and excited. Number five. What is the main idea of this story? A. A boy goes camping near Roswell, New Mexico with his classmates. B. A gullible boy thinks a regular airplane is actually a UFO. C. A boy becomes convinced that aliens, UFOs, and extraterrestrials are real. D. A boy tries to convince his friends that aliens and UFOs exist. Number six. The passage begins with the following paragraph. Tell yourself as much as you want to that you don't believe in aliens, UFOs, or extraterrestrials. But until you've spent one night camping out in the desert near the airfield outside of Roswell, New Mexico, sleeping under an open sky so immense and glittering that the ground beneath you seems like little more than a speck of dust drifting through an auditorium, I won't believe you. Why might the author have started the story in this way? A. To express that the narrator of the story doesn't trust the reader. B. To give the reader a hint about what might happen later in the story. C to force the reader to think about the dust in auditoriums. D, to convince the reader to go camping in the desert near Roswell, New Mexico. Number seven, choose the answer that best completes the sentence below. Dylan firmly believes in aliens. Dylan doesn't believe in aliens at all. A, in contrast. B, similarly. C, even though. D, for example. Then your last question is actually question number nine on here. How does Jesse feel after he realizes that he has just seen a regular old airplane? Cite evidence from the text to support your answer.